Pod 9J. We out here. Nickel, nickel. Yee! C-Dub on the beat. Slide through that city, made that Chevy swerve. Yeah. The bank account jumping, gotta do a twerk. I keep hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day. Feeling the blessing, like I always say, it's one live, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. With that being said, I have some more details about this particular video. You already seen the thumbnail. You already know what I'm going to talk about. Just wanted to clear some things, um, some misconstruments. And, uh, you know, my last video, I didn't add a lot of details based on the fact that there's a lot of intimate details. I was only giving you the version of why I reacted the way I reacted and what's the purpose of the song. But now I'm going to give you a lot more. But there's going to be a couple of details that I'm going to leave out for particular reasons. But let's get into the video. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like. Always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my app on Spotify music. Thank you guys for streaming my music. A lot of my songs are in the thousands right now. And I have you guys to thank for that. So I appreciate it and thank you for tuning in. One of the misconstruments that I started seeing, and uh, I got a couple messages in IG. Look, the, the original Rabbit Season video that, you know, Band and then put, uh, put out wasn't towards me was not directed towards me. It was actually directed towards the homie in the thumbnail. This guy, the homie Menace. So let me give you guys a little bit of backstory and then, and then get you up to the present moment. I was, uh, you know, uh, when I came out, I was in contact with uh, a couple of homies that I was on the yard with. And um, the homie Sleepy is the one was like, hey, bro, I'm in contact with the Playboys in uh, Tulare County. And he started shooting me their info while I ran across Menace's, uh, his Instagram page. I mean, the dude had a hat on, no eyes. For some reason, he had a black mask, a red hat. All his pictures was a red mask doing it. You know, he was thugged out. I was like, okay, sheesh, you ain't got a face. All right, so, so I never met a gang member without a face, but this should be a new one. How's he going to breathe and talk? Sent him a friend request. Sleepy got at him, told him I was going to get at him. He got back at me. From then on, I was in touch with him. Only through social media at the time. We were living in the same city at the moment. He was uh, shooting me a bunch of homies to, uh, you know, link up with social media wise. You know, I was keeping in touch with uh, a lot of people, but I was mostly in touch with the homie Sleepy from Vallejo before he caught a Fed case. So when I started pursuing my music thing, you know, all I, I wasn't really promoting it on social media. I was just shooting my link and all my music to all the homies. Just telling the homies, hey, bro, I'm doing this for us. I'm trying to elevate our game. You know, I want to stop doing this, stop doing that. I want to just be out there. Music industry rises. Let these fools know that we're different. Man is supporting me wholeheartedly. Every time I would send him my lyrics or send him a song, he'd always shoot me a picture at some point during the week. He's mobbing with homeboys, bumping my song. And back then I was trash. I was hot garbage. That's how we got to know each other. Through social media, he was always sending me pictures of you know, him spending time with his daughter, so on and so forth, or the girls he was hooking up with. Or sometimes he'd just be in the car drinking, holding a thing, and just be like, what's up, fool? It's good. And I'll just be like, nothing chilling. I'm at work, bro. What's good, man? Be safe out there. And he's like, yeah, what's up? And he'd be sliding. He'd be like showcasing all the streets he'd be on. And he'd be like right in the Northerner's Hood because he lived right in the middle of the Northerner's Hood. You know, I was busy trying to uh, maintain a job, focus on, you know, building my credit, you know, getting a new house. And then everything that I told you about in my last video started transpiring little by little. But I wasn't the type to tell my boys, like, hey, bro, I'm getting impressed by the Northerners, bro. Come get me. Come do this. Come do that. Hey, help me out, bro. I need one. I did everything myself. Because I don't need to bring anybody else into my problems and the problems I was starting acting immature when I first got out. But Menace was always checking on me all the time. Me and Menace got two mutual friends whose names I don't need to put out there, but they're real close friends. So I, I went to Central Valley meet and I got down with a northerner. And then I wanted to get in jumped by the Bulldogs. Then I wanted to get in jumped by the northerners in Visalia. And then uh, a couple other things transpired. The incident when I went to Sacramento and they ran up on my mom's house. It all happened just back to back to back to back. So I was already furious. I was already to the point like, all right, then now I'm going to bang hard on the, on the internet, you know, be an internet thug. And I was actually in the streets doing what I had to do. Because I saw I, there was a point where I reached where I was like, bro, they're, eventually they're going to catch me slipping and this time they're not gonna, just going to jump me. So I might as well be the first to do it. Even when I was on parole, even when my PO was checking my room, you know, I had a thing in another room. I had a roommate at the time, so I let him hold it while my P.O. checked my room and checked my bathroom. When he leave, I'd grab it, drive around the city of Visalia, acting stupid. Trust me, I'm changed. 
Back then, I was a totally different version. When I first started this YouTube, that's when I was slowly, you know, it's calming down. But before that, I was acting a donkey. All I cared about was making music, gang banging on every. I dropped like this song after this song after this song because it seems like everybody was putting my business out there, saying what they were gonna do. But when I'm out there, like it was not. It was, only certain people did stuff, and the other people kind of looked away. So I started holding everybody accountable. But that was my fault. That was my error. That was the stupidity of my ways. So when they dropped Rabbit Season, Menace was already busted. When they dropped Rabbit Season, they were talking about Menace. I didn't know nothing about what Menace did, whether that video that you see in the, uh, in the footage of him testifying on his codes and all that. I didn't know nothing about that. But a lot of people from up north, and here, this is going to be funny. Just remember I said a lot of the homies up north and some in the valley were like, hey, just shooting me in the link. Like, hey, fool, these fools are dissing. These fools are dissing. And because I was the only one that rapped and was making music and actually putting music out there on YouTube, you know, I watched the video. The video is about him because he personally beat for those dudes every day. Dude, they literally, I don't know how the situation went down. I'm only going to give you small details, but they shot up a pad either he was at or where he was living, and a girl got hit either in the face or kneecap. That nobody could tell me which one it was, but she got hit, went to the hospital. He made a call. He called. Uh, he actually called me and the homie at work when we were at Central Valley Me and was like, hey, bro, this just happened. This just happened. I need one. I need one. We're like, hey, bro, we're at work. Uh, can you wait till like 3.30, bro? We can't clock out. And he wound up getting one and doing what he had to do anyways. But me and this particular homie, we used to always try to tell Menace, like, hey, bro, you got a daughter. Forget these fools. Forget them, bro. If they catch us, they catch us. We'll handle business when we handle business, bro. But think about your daughter. You ain't got to be out there thug, thuggish, ruggish, bro. And he be shooting me snaps, wearing L.A. hats and blue uh, penalties, talking about, I want to see if they bang on me, fool, so I can bang back on them and we can get down. I'm like, bro, you're playing with fire, like hot lava, like volcanic eruption fire. But he didn't care, bro. He was, he was still young. The homies were throwing committees out here and they were having meetings on to Larry County before Goyo, rest in peace, died. I was in touch with Goyo a lot. So these pictures, you know, were being posted all over social media, surfacing. And uh, these, I, I'm not going to say these same dudes from Rabbit Season, but it was people that are connected to them. Posted a picture. It was six of us. I have, I have to look it up on my phone. It's somewhere in my archives. But there's six people. Menace is one of them. New, they said it's riders and new flowers, dropouts, you know, meet them with extreme force. Then they posted, they, that's when they posted my picture. And it was a, it was a dumb picture. It was a picture of me and my brother. And uh, they posted that with the car that Tony was driving saying, hey, if he's driving this car. If you see him, do what you got to do, handle business. And then the picture of the girl saying smash this hyena because she was kicking it with me, which I never even met. All that was going down. But the actual song is about Menace, and then he has a couple of subliminal shots towards somebody else. But that's a homie of mine that I'm real close to, that I got mad love for, so I'm not going to put his business out there. But I'm the one that reacted because all the homies were like, hey, fool, he dissing bunnies. So it's like they passed the ball to me, and me being a dumb kid, ignorant kid, let everybody pump me up, and then I reacted. And I was like, you know what, forget these fools. But I got real personal in the song. Real personal. Like, I found out later that, you know, what Menace did, and I was like, yeah, whatever, bro. It is what it is. You know, the little homie, I guess he went out, bro. That, you know what I mean? It makes us look bad, but so what, bro? I mean, it is what it is. But see, if you guys you guys only hear the song, people that are uh, commenting about Rabbit Season, which I appreciate everybody, you know, EBK family and Upstate point of view, they showed how to love on that song, and I appreciate them for that. But if you really listen to the lyrics, there's more to that song. Then people really know. Everybody's saying it's a good song, but there's so much intimate details that I put in there. Like, for example, there's a girl that's like dedicated to the cause from, you know, Visa. I don't know what hood she's from, but she loves everybody from Visa knows this homegirl. But me and Menace mess with her. And we've been identified and we've been targeted like crazy. And then Menace actually had recorded her privately without letting her know. And she was just getting tweaked out talking about how these fools are pieces of this and this and this and that. She was like smutting up her own homies. And about a week later when she's sober, she's, she's taking pictures with these dudes. And she's actually marrying one in the pen. That's a homie from Visa. So Menace was putting her on blast. And, you know, I ain't going to lie. Me and Menace were exchanging, you know, conversations about this years ago. And I had a, a video of that same Heine. 
And I actually posted it in my old video on the rabbit season. You know, she was she was taking it off. And if she was showing everything, she was playing with everything and she bent it over. I got a lot. I probably still have it in my messenger. I have to go, I have to I have to really go through my messenger to find it. But yeah. But I'm not gonna show it to you guys. But still, we uh so we started making fun of her for that. But that's how petty I was. That's how young minded I was being back then when I didn't when I had that I don't give up mentality. I was just going crazy, dude. It was to the point like I was gonna start going back to robberies because I didn't like my jobs, these nine to fives, they weren't paying me enough. I wanted more money and one more. I was gonna I was already reverting back to my old ways of thinking. That's in a bad state. I was like when I was just my YouTube back then was only about music. I mean, that was it. It got so serious, bro. When when, when I dropped Rabbit Season, by the time it hit 8,400 views, you'll be surprised how many people were in my DMs on Instagram shooting me their locations. Bro, they were actually to the point shooting me pictures of their kids, bro. Of their kids and their old ladies where their old ladies lives. Like, everybody wanted me to go after these fools. And I used to tell myself, like, bro, anytime I can, I can, if I wanted to, I could. But I'm like, bro, when, when I started seeing these fools, like, go on their Facebook and take screenshots of the picture of their, all their family and their kids and shoot them to me, I was like, man, this is, this is getting out of hand, bro. Like, they dissed the homies. They dissed the bunny. I reacted. Okay. You know, it's pretty much as far as it was going to go because I'm already getting the, the crap beat out of me everywhere I go. If I'm wearing, and it was just bad. It was a bad look. I haven't even told you about the other times I got jumped. And another part of my song, I, if you listen to the lyrics, I said, uh, I was there at Frank Liquors. Well, Frank Liquors is on the north side. Right there. Oh, I, by the way, that girl, she works at Vallarta's in Visalia. She's a cash register. But uh, the, I went the, behind Frank Liquors, it's a, it's a smoke shop. But, damn, how can I say this? They do gambling, should I say. Even though gambling is only legal in Vegas. And I used to go play little slots on my phones. I used to make, I used to win, like, maybe I'll turn, like, 20 bucks sometimes into, like, 100 bucks. Or I could put 100 bucks on it and flip it and get, like, three, 400. And then I would lose most of it and get it back. The homie, uh, my boy Steve, man, he rest in peace. He's the one that put me onto that. So I was a dumb kid, and I lived on the north side. I lived right behind, the, it was either in the front or behind Oval. On the north side. So I used to, it was, you know, Frank Liquors is right around my area. I would go over there, go get my puff bars from there, and just stand outside acting stupid, waiting to see if I would go see any northerners. I would go in there and buy two corn dogs. I'd be walking out of the store eating a big old corn dog in my mouth, smoking on a little pink puff bar. Yeah, I was really hard to the core. That was pretty stupid now that I think about it. But not, not, not the two people rapping in the video, but somebody else in that video, I seen them there. Maybe he recognized me, maybe he didn't. But I still put him on blast for it, which I shouldn't have. And then a Heine that's actually from Visa, out of nowhere, just shot me this paperwork that she found. And now there's people that these guys have put in music videos that are on file as informants and had their names and what, what officers they talked to. Do I had a list of them. No, I mean, I can't honestly verify whether it was true or not, but this Heine was like, here, bro, these, since you scan us fools over here targeting Heine's and targeting us homegirls for messing around whoever we want. Look, here's the dirt on them. And I'm reading it like, what the? So I go talk to a couple homeboys. I was like, you reading that? And the homie that I know from Varsa was like, yeah, I know a few of those fools. I was like, all right, I'm going to use it. So the very last two sentences in rabbit season, I, I said that. And then in my video, I posted the paperwork for like 20 seconds so people can read it. And I was like, bro, that's your homies over there being federal informers talking to these cops. But you get what I'm saying? That's the, that's the pettiness I was on. That was the childish games I was playing. That was the dumb risks I was taking as a, as a, as, as a young dumbass, as a young dummy, because, you know, I was in a bad place. I, was, I had a lot of hate, a lot of resentment. These guys weren't the ones that dissed my cousin in the music video. This person right here is the one that dissed my cousin in a music video. He's the one that rap, he's the one that smoked my cousin and did a music video and, they, and pissed on his grave. So there was a lot of misconstruement that I was hearing getting thrown out in the air. So I wanted to clear things up. It sucks that I got to talk about it, but I don't want nobody to get the misconstruement of you know what my other video was about. So I had to give you a little bit more intimate detail so you could see where this was going. Like honestly, bro, now that uh now that my son's into this world, I'm gonna be honest with you, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna receive a lot of criticism for this, but uh. You know, that you guys are more than welcome to comment in the comment section. But you'll be surprised, bro. The moment I found out Tani was pregnant, this is my first kid. I was, I, was, I was calming down. That thing with Snoop, 
Bro, you have no idea how much more serious it's gotten the last two months. But I'm not going to talk about that until way later. An incident just occurred two weeks ago that I'm waiting to see the outcome of. So I can talk to you guys about it. Just so you guys can get where I'm coming from. Why I decided to change and just not just not go down that route of beefing with everybody anymore. I mean, if they're going to bring it to me, they're going to bring it to me. There's nothing I could do. I'm going to pay for those mistakes that I made back then. I know the dumb things I was doing. I'm mature enough to realize that. But that's the problem. I don't want to be part of no beef no more. I don't really care. It's already out there. Trust me. If I could delete rabbit season off, off social media, I would. I just ain't got access to that account because I used a totally different email. Like the very first email I created on my first iPhone 8 when I got out in 2020. So, you know, I was broke. And uh, it was a dumb name. And I still to this day, I can't remember. So I can't get access to that. So I started a new one with 5.9J. Because back then I was in a bitter place. I was in a resentful, hateful place where I was like F the world. Where I, mean, I couldn't sleep with a woman without thinking, man, she might be a double agent. All these girls wanted to invite me ever since rabbit season came out and I was dissing their homies. All of a sudden, all these girls in my DMs, they, what are you doing? You want to come over? You want to do this? You want to go hang out? I couldn't trust nothing and nobody. So I met Tani. And then when she got pregnant, bro, my whole world changed. I watched that kid grow inside of her every month. But yeah, I did what I did. And I, but the thing is, I, I guess somebody said it, you know, the sons pay for the sins of their fathers. I've been seeing it on shows and somebody said it was like a biblical saying. But that's what I'm trying to prevent. Let me pay for my sins. If something happens to me, then I, then I had it coming because of the stupidity I've done. I'm at peace with that already. I'm doing this YouTube because it's become successful to the point where if I wanted to, I could take my family out right now. I'm just working a little bit harder, or just a little bit harder. I could leave my son something behind in the end. I have an opportunity to actually take care of my son way better than I was ever taken care of. So yes, my, uh, my demeanor, my attitude, my productivity has changed a lot. Some people have noticed, some people don't care to notice. Some people still try to bring the old me out of me, but I'm like, bro, that guy's gone, bro. Unless you force my hand, unless you threaten me and my family, unless we have to take it there where I ain't got no choice on the streets, then you'll see my old me. But until then, bro, I'm not going to react no more. I'm really not. I just want to do good music. I want to do this YouTube channel. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to you guys. Last month, I did three videos a day faithfully. It wasn't just because I wasn't working because I was working most of the time. You guys want to know the legitimate reason why I worked hard, bro? It's because Tani wants to go back to school and finish her welding class. And it cost a couple of thousand. So I went hard and finally put the money away to put her so she could finish school. That way, if anything does happen to me, she has a great career that's going to take care of her and her babies and my son. That was been my goal. Now, anything else, I'm going to turn this YouTube into an LLC, create like business credit and see if I can take this YouTube channel to a whole new level. That's the, that's the goal right now. Thought I'd share that with you guys. Yeah, so I just wanted to clear that up. The video, the, the, the diss song wasn't about me. Me and, uh, me and Bandit and all them, we didn't have it. We didn't exchange words till later. But it wasn't really Bandit per se. It was more, it was more or less, uh, I don't want to say his name. Because in all actuality, he's, he follows me on Instagram. He's the one that followed me. And then I followed back and realized, like, oh, is this fool? You know what I mean? So I'm not really going to put him out there no more. But, you know, some of his homies were the ones dissing me. And I was just dissing back, like talk. We were just talking smack on YouTube, on, on Instagram stories, and this, this, and that. And I remember one of them. I, I ain't gonna lie, one of them clown me, bro. It was funny, bro. Like I couldn't help but laugh. Like he was talking smack to me, and all I said was, "Hey, bro, you can just suck my, you woo woo woo." And when I sent that message to him, he sent it back, and he goes like like this. It was a little emoji that went like that, and I was like. And as soon as I seen it, I started laughing. I was like, oh, damn, I didn't even know they had an emoji for that. That's tight. He actually used a good one on me. He gassed me right there. And I left it alone. But Menace, this picture of Menace, that's how me and Rico Too Smooth got into it. Because Rico posted him and started calling him a D.O., Bunny, Kill Bunnies, this and this and that. And the homie shot me uh, Rico Too Smooth's story. I didn't even follow Rico Too Smooth. I, I, at that time, I didn't really care about listening to Northerners. And then I responded on his uh, story, like, man, woo, 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 dissed him. 
And I was like, all right, then, fool. So what did I do? Like a dummy, like a childish little kid. I went and recorded that fight with Rico Too Smooth fighting that Sureño. And the Sureño dropped him, posted it on my story on Instagram. And then I found the video where him doing yoga with, and he's saying he was a Sureño or something. And I posted that one. I was like, man, shut your woo 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 woo. And then both of our IG accounts got deleted for uh, uh, what's called hateful, b- hateful remarks or bullying or something. But it was like for just 24 hours. And then the 24 hours later, he posted like, yeah, these fools snitched on me, reported my account. That's why I didn't post nothing last night. That's how me and Rico got into it. That's all it went. That's as far as he went. But they were talking about menace. Just trust me, there's a lot more behind Rabbit Season and my video and my song. It's just... I only talked about it because that's, people were always asking me about it. And a lot of subscribers say, hey, man, that's like your best song. Boy, I love that song. You should do a video to it. So I, find, I waited like eight months later to finally tell everybody, like, bro, this is why I won't do a video to it, bro. And I'm sorry to say, I'm pretty sure a lot of people want to see me react. They want to see me on, you know, beefing with other people, bro. But I'm just not that person no more. I'm sorry. I mean, I truly apologize. You know, I used to be out there in the streets trying to be thuggish, ruggish bone. Bro, I don't even care about them streets no more. Unless I'm going to some girl's house to beat some guts since I'm in an open relationship. Or I'm going to go chase a bag. That I ain't got nothing. I'm going to do a music video, record. I ain't doing nothing out there. I love the feeling of coming home, bro. And as soon as my son sees me, he just smiles, bro. I ain't got to say nothing. Like, I'd rather be on that couch watching him grow every day. He's gotten so big. He looks just like me. He cries a lot. I'm not going to lie. He's already doing his tummy time, so he's lifting his shoulders up and his head up, but then he's like 30 seconds later, he puts his head down. But that's the point where I'm at in life right now. I do not care. I don't care who, what anybody has to say about me, what, who wants to be for me, bro, whatever. Eventually, I'm going to step outside for a reason. If you see me, you see me. You don't, you don't. And if you do see me and you let me be, hey, man, thank you. I appreciate it. Because I'd rather be living and breathing, bro, because I have a reason to be living and breathing now. Then to be on the internet dissing this fool, dissing this fool, dissing that fool, dissing that fool, and just have the whole world hating me. Trust me, I'm already hated. I already live in bad circumstances. And if I can tell you about the two situations that just recently occurred a couple weeks ago, I would, but I can't because the things are fresh right now. So I have to wait to see how the outcome is, and then I'm going to talk about them later. So stay tuned for those videos. Right, Just right now, things are a little bit, mm-hmm, hey. But I'd rather stay at home. And some people might just call me a coward or a sucker or, yeah, you make rap lyrics talking all this woo, 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 but you're in the house. I don't care. I rap to rap. I live the life, so I'm going to rap about it. Do I care about the life? Bro, i already been there. If people want to choose to go down that route and, continue and, and explore it and learn themselves, so be it. All I ever done was just tell the truth and just be honest about prison politics so that all these kids have a, a fighting chance to know what they're getting themselves into. Instead of being that big homie to tell the homies, go to jail, bro, and be a homie. And they don't even know what a homie is being about. That's all I've ever done. So, yeah, I uh, just wanted to share this video with you guys, man. Give you guys a little bit more intimate details on it. Um, got some more videos to do. My days off are Wednesday and Thursday. So, I'm going to record some music. And I'm going to do the whole video. So, that should be dropping in a couple of weeks. So, stay tuned for that. So, with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When they got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.